You are listening and watching to a very special podcast. Here we have more on Lola. Enjoy. Things were about to get bad, but Lola was not going out without a fight. That's when she stood up from the table and walked over to the hotel. That's when the others call out, Lola! She stopped. You actually believe I'm going to let this monster get away with it? I don't think so. If you're planning on stopping me, go ahead, but I am not going to let a friend suffer. And Mian said, Mason's going to be fine. I am so sick of this monster. I am not letting him get away. If you're choosing on stopping me, go ahead and try. But I'm not giving up. Not without a fight. So she turned and she started running. The others followed behind. Lola ran and ran to the hotel until she felt her lungs were about to burst. But she didn't stop. And when she did stop, she did a little mid jog until she leaped into there. The hotel was scattering and everyone wanted to check out because of that monster. They were just too scared. There were two people sitting on the couch. There was a man comforting a woman who looked like she had been crying. Lola came across the two. They turned out to be only just Mason's uncle and aunt. The two of them received word that Mason's parents were killed by that monster. As it was expected, Mason had called his uncle and aunt. He explained that while he was just in the bathroom, he heard some sort of squishing sounds that made him want to puke. When he peeked out after he did his business, he saw a white, thin, tall figure. The figure noticed and tried to break down the door. Mason was trying to escape and called his uncle and aunt until the monster came and attacked Mason. Lola came up to the two. Excuse me. Um, where is this monster, by the way? We don't know, the aunt said. Oh, it's so terrible for what happened to Mason. Where is he? I, I heard someone took him. No, he wasn't taken. He's fine. A friend just helped him escape. So he's alive. He's fine. Don't worry. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Well... That's a relief, at least. Yeah. Where is the monster? We don't know. The police have no idea and they're searching the premises. Guests are supposed to leave and they got their stuff together. But I'm afraid there could be more people and they don't know what's going on. That's when they heard a scream from above and Lola could see someone was dangling by a thread with that white tall monster figure roaring at it and growling. The figure then was dropped from below by the monster. Lola used her powers to save this person. The person was just hypervailing so much that he had to be calmed down. Lola saw how scared he was until she finally felt anger inside. Then she exclaimed while stamping her foot, that is it. I am gonna deal with this once and for all. She climbed up the stairs towards the floors. She was not gonna take too kindly with this. And Demian called out, Lola, don't do it. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna end this now. I will not take this any longer. 
Are you insane? Kirstein said. You're gonna get yourself hurt. Don't do it, he said. Lola said. Jean, I'm trying to save lives, just like you were. Do you not want me to save lives like how you saved me? She asked. This shock, Jean. Uh, uh, no, it's just that this is too dangerous. Jean, you've faced a lot of dangerous things. But you don't have any healing facting powers. So what if I don't have a healing factor? Big whoop! <sighs> but listen to me. If I don't stop this now, this thing is gonna kill a lot more than just one person. A lot of people are gonna die. And I'm gonna feel responsible. You're not the one that caused this. I'm sorry, Jean. I am not going to let this happen again. I'm sure you don't want to either. He didn't know what to say, but he nodded. Fine. Just don't die, okay? Try not to, Lola said. She was about to turn when Lasana called out. Lola! Wait! You're gonna need this! Then she tossed over something. And all of a sudden, Lola caught it in time. Lola took it, and she realized. What is it? It's a... It's a... It's just a rifle! You're gonna need that, just in case. Try to weaken it. Even though you can't kill it, just weaken it. Lasana called out. Are you sure? It would be a manly thing if we could take it down. Elfman called out. I really don't have time for this manliness talk of yours, Elfman. I gotta stop it. Then she ran. M Mira called out in an encouragement. Run, Lola! Run! She called out. This gave Lola a chance to run. She ran from different floors, increasing up while taking the staircase and roaming around, running and looking. She looked around in the rooms, but nothing. They all have been half open and empty, but she had to be a little more cautious. That's when she reached to the roof and looked around. She saw no one was in sight. However, she scanned around. She looked down to see her crew was just looking up, wondering what the heck was going on. Lola sighed. Okay, they're down there. I'm up here. They're safe, even though I'm not, but I'm not letting this monster get away. That's when she heard a small growl. She turned and she saw the thing coming at her. She tried shooting at it, even though it did nothing. But this thing was a lot more powerful than ever. It then roared and snapped its teeth. Gosh, it had huge, sharp teeth overwhelming its mouth. And it looked like he didn't even have any lips. Lola shuddered. Ew. Did you look at that? Looks rather <laughs> unappealing. She tried her best not to go backwards, but this thing, whatever it was, was really, really coming too close for comfort. 
Lola held up the gun. I know this isn't gonna hurt you or kill you. I know what you are, she called out to it. But you have to stay away from me. Don't come any closer or I'll shoot, she threatened. The monster sounded like he didn't even hear anything. However, Lola said, I don't know what's the weak point. Is it your brain or your heart? I can shoot you and let your brain splatter all over, even though maybe it could be possible that you can grow back a brain like how a lizard grows back a limb, she said. Still, the monster took no heed and came closer and closer until she realized this thing was a lot taller than Shuhei, Izuru, Jean, maybe even taller than Eren, and perhaps taller than, of course, Reiner and Bertrand, the colossal titan and the armored one. It could be more stronger than the titans, maybe, or the vampires. Lola couldn't believe it. My god. Its glowing eyes was looking down, down at Lola. Lola felt trembling hands as she clutched the gun. She pointed it at it and said, Stay back. Stay back, she said. She almost fall off the building, but she didn't. She clamped her feet. However, her feet were near the edge of the roof. That's when a voice called out, Don't shoot it! You can't kill it. You can't even weaken it. It'll grow a lot more stronger. Benjamin Hallows! I never thought I would see you again, she said. Listen to me. Just leave my greatest creation alone, Ben said. It did nothing to deserve this. Why are you being so sympathetic? Listen to me. Stop this now, okay? Stop this creature from coming any closer to me, Lola said, still clutching the gun. I'll call it off. But you have to listen to me. Why should I listen to you? That whole beach incident? That was all you. Why did you do it? Taylor said, Don't blame him. Please don't blame him. He's begged. You don't want me to beg him? Are you serious? Lola said. You're just trying to make fun of me. Nobody is making fun of you. Please. Oh, I'll explain myself, he begged. I don't believe you. And this abomination you call your experiment has to die. Lola then fired one into the creature. The creature felt a twinge of pain and began to roar. That's when Lola felt the gun grabbed from her and it was crushed by the monster. <gasps> Please, have... However, she lost her balance. The monster reached over to try to attack, but it missed, and Lola began to fall from the building, and she screamed for dear life. The others call out for her. Lola knew this was it. Not! Stay tuned. We got more coming your way. I'm Catherine Donovan. Catch you later.